Welcome to What Is It About the Weather, a podcast where we explore the many ways that weather intertwines itself into our lives. I'm your host, Mark Jelinek, and this week we're going to talk about whether we should even be forecasting the weather. Hope things are going well in your weather world. My weather world, you know, it's been trying to spring. I had a couple nice days this week, actually very unseasonably warm. I have very, that's a strong word, unseasonably warm, pleasant, nice enough to get out and go around. Seasonable late winter, early spring weather has returned, and even a little chance of some snow this week. I was noticing that uh, parts of, middle part of the U.S. were getting a pretty strong snowstorm. It was an interesting setup that allowed kind of a storm to stall in a place that doesn't always do that. So hopefully... The people that like a lot of late season powder to do some skiing and get some outdoor activities are enjoying that. I know I've got some friends and acquaintances out in that region, seen a few tweets. Looks like quite an event. And again, hopefully everybody's enjoying, no one's getting injured or hurt, caught off guard, whatever it might be. All right, let's talk smells for a minute. Yeah, we, you know, you, you remember that smell episode. And I mentioned that I couldn't remember who the tweet was from that had prompted that episode. I looked and looked. I did. I spent a lot of time looking. I was like, have have I lost my mind? And I mentioned Aaron, and it was not Aaron. Aaron got in touch with me and said it wasn't him, even though he enjoyed the episode. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for being a Patreon supporter as well. And then I heard from Ella. And Ella said, oh, it was my tweet. And the reason you can't see it anymore is she took her Twitter account private. So all those things, she probably just kicked me right off of there. So I couldn't see anymore. I, You know, again, there's a lot of people that I don't necessarily follow back on Twitter. I don't with the podcast website. I try to with my personal account. So a lot of times if people follow the podcast feed on Twitter, I will connect with them personally with my, you know, Mark underscore July account. Don't always do that. It just depends on what I've got going on. It doesn't really matter. End of day, I had uh, lost a connection with her, although she is still, of course, listening to the podcast, listening enough to respond. I appreciate you doing that. It sounded like I at least touched on some of the things that she was interested in. So hopefully that's the case. And as always, as always, you can reach me at Mark underscore Jelonic on Twitter, if that's how you want to get hold of me. What is it about the weather at gmail.com. You can also find the podcast on Twitter. I don't put a whole lot out there. I, I need to get back in better about doing that. I used to do one once a week, and I don't know. I just kind of get in and out of habit of doing that thing. Probably should be more regular with that. Maybe post some stories that I think, yeah, that's another thing. I should probably be doing more. Here's an article, something I'm considering, and just see if I get responses. Any case. What is about the weather on Twitter as well? And of course, if you want to support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash weather. All right, let's get to the main story. Should we be forecasting weather? How do we get here? Now, you, you know, sometimes, like I said, sometimes I have episodes that I hash about for weeks or longer that I kind of want to churn in my head. Sometimes I have episodes that I investigate. Right? Like the, the history and weather ones are usually something that, you know, I start it and it'll take a couple of weeks to get in end because, you know, I want to dig through a variety of sources. And then some I have just things come up. And this was definitely one of those things come up scenario. Right. I'm not a TikTok user. Don't fully understand it. I appreciate it. I just, it, I, when I say don't use it, I don't get into it enough. I haven't created any content on it. I get the the gist of what it is, but a lot of it's just lost on me. Maybe because I don't have a lot of time to spend in there. And I think you have to spend a little bit of time for it to really be useful. That's my impression of it so far. Useful is a strong word. Entertaining the level that I might find it useful. But every now and then I'll see TikToks that are shared in other venues, right? And there was one that came out a few weeks ago that just finally, of course, floated up my way was this person who was explaining how she never understood what percentage of precipitation, what we call pop in the weather space. So you'll hear 30% chance of rain. Let's stick with rain, not even get snow in the mix. So you hear 30% chance of rain. What does it mean? Okay. 
what does that mean? And she said, well, I'd always thought it meant X and I found out it meant Y and I immediately you know, cringed. <laughs> and then I started doing some looking in Google as I was doing this episode and everybody under the sun that's in the weather space, right. Had talked about this to some degree. I mean, all the big companies, a lot of station, you know, their meteorologists had talked about it because what she said was a true statement in that it is one way and that you determine the percentage of precipitation. But as I've talked about this before, it's really not that simple. So if you ever go to like the National Weather Service and you go to weather.com, not weather.com, weather.gov, and you put in your location, it pulls up a point forecast for you based on the nearest grid point where you are. And when you look at like the hourly weather graph, which is one of the options you can do there, and you see a percentage of a chance of precipitation, or you even look through the text products, it's the information's there. They're truly forecasting to that point, right? That is what's going on. And more or less, they're saying that there's a 30% chance that that point is going to get, at least in, in, the, in this case, and it varies based on country, a hundredth of an inch of rain, because that's what we consider measurable precipitation here in the U.S., now, it's not that simple, though, because you've got to put that in other context. Anytime someone is forecasting, let's say a, a broadcast meteorologist for a, an area, they're talking about the entire area. And this is where the TikTok user you know, was speaking to. And so a 30% chance of rain may be in some of the viewing area. They'll get a hundred, there's a 100% chance, maybe a front sweeping through, and they're pretty certain it's going to rain everywhere. But others may not be. I mean, let's say someone's forecasting for the whole state, big state. Could just be that part of it's going to get rain and part of it's not. So they kind of divide that up and say it's, you know, going to be dependent on where you are. And that's where, you know, you get into this whole thing. How useful is that forecast? In any case, you got to take in the, all these things into consideration. There's the size of the region that's being forecasted. There is the time window. All right. Don't lose sight of that. And then there's the confidence factor. So a forecast may have at that grid point, it might be rain's going to go through, but the forecaster may be going, all right, I think that that's really a, only 40% because I know the models tend to miss in this area. And so I'm going to knock that down. So you got to, you, it really isn't as simple as there's one thing, but all those different components come into play. All right. But just that one thing, this thing about precipitation, just that one thing. And we talk about the what are a lot of the challenges that go with forecasting? Then I also came across an article that talked about, and I, and I think I might, the link will be in the show notes. It's an article I found interesting about how much people understand about weather. How much do people really know? And they have this thing called DKE or the Dunning-Kruger effect. And this got into that, that effect is people tend to give themselves more credit for being knowledgeable about a topic than they really are. Okay. So people are getting a weather forecast. They think they know what they're doing with that weather forecast or what the forecaster might be saying, and they act upon it. And their actions don't match what the forecast really was. So we got this rain thing that may not always be, you know, people may not even really understand what the forecast is saying. We've got examples of people not maybe knowing as much about a topic as they think they do. This isn't just a weather thing. That's a lot of things. Then I had an interesting conversation this past week with a couple of people from a NOAA location, actually a couple of different locations, but in Alaska. All right. And shout out to Kitty and Caitlin. Hope you guys are doing well up there. But we had an interesting conversation about the idea of forecasting in a region. For those that don't know about Alaska, the forecast ranges are usually much larger because the weather models are as precise in that region. They tend not to be run on the same grid set, so it's covered a bigger area. They've got this huge state to cover, as an example. And what they're finding is they're forecasting, and the tendency, or you think the tendency, is to forecast towards where the bulk of the people are. But the reality might be that the most Important areas that are being impacted by weather might be shipping channels or fishing areas or other things that it's a smaller population, but maybe from an economic standpoint, it's huge, right? It could be enormous. 
And that's what we call impact forecasting. And maybe you've heard me mention that before. And so we had a little bit of a conversation about that. And the reality is most of the meteorologists I talk with, I think we all agree that the idea of forecasting a little bit further down the food chain, and this is where you've heard me mention it before, might be the right way to go. Because taking all these examples I brought up, should we really be forecasting weather as opposed to forecasting what that really means? Right? Do you really need to have an umbrella? Do you really need to have a coat on? Do you really need to avoid being outside for a six-hour window because you're going to have you know, gale force winds coming through, whatever it might be, right? But less about the weather and getting into the weather forecast and more about what that translates into, okay? You're still getting a forecast per se. You're just getting a forecast for what you're doing as opposed to what the weather is going to be. Now, there are times when we still just need to know about the weather. Maybe you just want to know about the weather because it's make you, you hear there's going to be a sunny day. And so you'll make a point of instead of eating lunch inside, you go sit outside, you know, find some space, especially with as much as we've been you know, trapped inside. Maybe you go sit at a, a cafe outside and have a little lunch. All right. Then we got this other part of the problem is meteorologists have been trained to be very good at weather forecasting and they're not necessarily good at the other piece. So there's going to need to be a blend of Tool sets, right? This gets in the idea that meteorologists, whether they're computer, robot, people, whatever they are, are creating a weather-based piece of information in an information chain that still gets into decision support at the end. Now, in the midst of all that, we still need to disrupt then the way we think about weather and there's going to be this challenge of, is it really worth it? And we get back to the idea of what's the weather value for each person or each company in this process. But as more and more precision, I guess, is probably the right word to put around the quality of the forecast, but where it needs to be and for the items that a decision needs to be made about is more of that is available is it's a better quality forecast, I think there is a call to create the disruption. So a lot of disruption I've seen is just changing how we think about weather, using new sources, right? Like the climate cell uses the cell tower information to give them a new way to see precipitation. Now that's disruption. It's a new process. But that's not necessarily disruption in the way weather forecasts are being utilized or weather forecast information is being utilized. There are companies out there doing it. They might be doing it in a segment versus doing it specifically in areas or, you know, the people facing side of it that, that many of us see on a regular basis. But we got to balance that, right? There's still this, some folks just like to know about the weather. Some folks, like I said, they're maybe just interested in what's going on. Some people have a genuine interest in the weather. It still is kind of that non-political, non-family gossip, whatever it is. It's, it's this thing that happens to all of us every day because it does. I mean, unless you're so shut in that you never see a window or never go outside at all. It impacts us. And so it's a common thing that we all migrate towards. And it's not necessarily charged with any opinions, any ideas, any philosophies. Yes, there are people that get worked up about the weather. I can be one of them at times, especially when I see videos of people trying to explain something and quite certain they're informing their grand audience that, aha, this is the thing, and then you just walk away shaking your head. The other reality is not everyone's going to understand the impacts you're trying to drive. So if you're doing impact-based forecasting, maybe you're creating impact forecasts, but it's not useful because someone has taken the time to create their own Im impact matrix, if you will. They're good enough. They don't, they don't really need to know about the weather, but they know when temperatures hit a certain level or winds hit a certain level, that that's going to translate into, I need to not be out on a boat. I need to make sure I have my umbrella. I need to not be outside at all. I need to make sure I have a way to get tornado alerts if something's going to happen. 
But it also might be this complicated challenge that even for an individual, the impacts and the influence it might have is still too complicated for the systems that we have in place, right? So we get to the same idea of why are we forecasting anyways? It's useful, but it's still, I mean, if you think about it, what else do we do that we look forward in time? Right. Think about all the things where you look for. Maybe you're thinking about starting a family. Maybe you're thinking about budgets for the next year. Maybe you're thinking about, I don't know, what the stock market's going to look like. But seldom do we do things kind of on the fly. So with weather forecasting, every day it happens. And it's going to be wrong sometimes. It's going to be right some other times. But maybe the answer really still is going to be somewhere in the middle. I still think we need better impact-based forecasting. I still think people who don't want to think about the weather shouldn't have to think about the weather when they're making their planning around the weather. Yeah, there are going to be times when there's always exceptions to that. Right? But if, if, that being the key word there, group of people came together, not just meteorologists. And trust me, we've met about this at conferences and stuff I've been to. This is a meteorology issue. It is a information technology issue. It's a social science issue. It all gets down to all these things have to come together. And it's a, you know, a business emergency management, you know, impacts. It's kind of tricky because impacts are about a variety of sectors. It's not as simple as it's just for the businesses or it's just for the emergency managers. Now, you could tackle one of those to begin with, test it out, see if it works. And that may be the way to go too. But in the end, no matter how you slice it, we're going to need to forecast something. But I wouldn't be surprised five years down the road, maybe not five, ten years down the road, there's a little less focus on a thousand weather apps, right? And a little more focus on decision processes and what you're going to be doing and just understanding that the weather component has just been worked into that. So you don't have to think about the weather. Now, I hope that never really happens, <laughs> but I can understand why for Probably 80% of the population, you know, the old 80 20 rule. Probably 80% of the population really doesn't need to know about the weather every day. Doesn't mean the weather doesn't impact them. Doesn't mean that they're not doing anything weather related. It just means that, hey, they need to know what to do, not whether it's going to be sunny, rainy, cloudy, windy, snowy, icy. Severe weather, non-severe weather. Spring, fall, summer, winter kind of thing. They just need to, they just need to move along. I could be wrong. Let me know if you think I am. I, you know, like to think that, like I've said all along, that people have this interest in weather. And as with this podcast, things bigger than weather are the things that weather touches. But I'm not sure... that we need to be focused on the weather forecast part of that. I'm not so sure of that anymore. used to think it was. I used to think where things were. And again, this is part of this is watching the evolution of where, you know, AI is and what computers can do. And I think with some tweaking in there, we can make that step. We'll see. Let me know your thoughts. I already told you how to contact me. So I'm not going to push that out there again. And just know. Whether you're enjoying the oncoming spring, wherever you are, or maybe you're working your way into fall, and that can be good too. A little break in the summer heat. We got a lot of things coming up. It's kind of outdoorsy season for the northern hemisphere is getting ready to kick in. Hopefully, with where vaccinations are going, etc., We'll be able to spend some time enjoying that this year. And I hope, for everyone's sake, that you get a chance to enjoy the weather as well. But in the interim, when you wake up tomorrow, 
think about the things, I don't know, three things that you go, this is why I pay attention to the weather forecast. And do I really need to know about the weather? Or would it be easier if someone just kind of said, yeah, carry an umbrella or this, instead of worrying about telling you whether it was going to be 80 degrees or 60 degrees or whatever it might be, or whether there's going to be a 30% chance of rain. Because as with impact forecasting, we all know there's much more to weather than the weather itself.